Hello, and welcome to watch the sixth episode of Nene Nele. I'm Nele. Today is Saturday, 16th of September 2017. It has been a lovely sunny day in southern Finland, of which unfortunately I have not been able to enjoy because I have a sinus infection. The little bugger came to visit again. Uh, I thought I'll record this episode anyway today, because next weekend I'm heading to a knitting retreat. And weekend after that, there's something else, I can't remember what. But I'm going to be busy all weekend, so that'll be a long time before I could then record an episode. Uh, I have actually nothing new to show you. <laughs> Oh no, I have one piece to show you that you haven't seen earlier, before, ever, and it's finished. It has been uh, in process of making now uh, three years, three and a half years. It was meant to be a summer comment to my goddaughter for her first summer, and she turns, turns four in end of October. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I have finished a few objects. I showed you last time a pair of socks that I was going to uh, stripe back a bit because I didn't like how the uh, the uh, in uh, decreases after heel were coming along. Uh, they were made from uh, this yarn. This is a cool late uh, drops fable. Uh, my goddaughter and I died this when they were visiting. And I finished the socks on Thursday. And yesterday I sent a parcel to my goddaughter and uh, surprisingly the socks were in it. Uh, I was left with I'd say five grams. I'm not entirely sure I haven't weighed it yet. But a small ball of yarn left. And uh, they, I hope the socks are the right size. Uh, we did draw uh, her thematics when she was visiting, and her mother then told me that she has grown so much out of that. And even though I make the socks a wee bit bigger than the thematics were showing, I do hope that the socks fit. The other piece I finished was the test knit that I was knitting for Tinker Hand Knits and it was of this yarn and this is uh, Drops Merino Extra Fine and uh, I combined it with this uh, purple plum color as a uh, main color, contrasting color and that's why I had such a rush to uh, get the parcel out because the uh, test knitting ends on next Saturday, Sunday, something like that, and I need to have actually opinion of the fit. So uh, I sent the parcel out yesterday. The third piece I included to the parcel was uh, the Sailor shawl I showed you a couple of episodes ago, and. Uh, well, that's what for, what for sure she hasn't all grown just yet. <laughs> no, uh, I think the sweater that I made, so uh, this was the first time that I chose the size 4 to 6. Until now, I've always knitted the 2 to 4. And I think the sweater game was huge. And, um, well, of course, it's better to be a wee bit big than a wee bit too small because then it has room to grow and she can wear it for a couple of winters. But of course, I would like that the sweater is that size that she could actually start wearing now. But um, I haven't heard back from you, so uh, let's keep the fingers crossed. Uh, I have. Actually, I think you have seen these before. I think they were a whip when I was last time recording. 
uh, these are the M total overalls, the bear too. Uh, for a baby that is going to be born in the family in the near future. And um, I heard it's going to be a boy. So uh, these will be shipped uh, in a couple of days, probably on Monday. Uh, so this uh, M total pattern is uh, by um, Sanni Koivumaki. Also known as Nekkis in Ravelry and Kiukkulimpu in uh, YouTube world. I used hand dyed Novita Nalle into hand dyed my own hand dyed uh, colorways. And um, as I said, this is the bear too. So I have the bear one over here. This way I needed one pair after another. They are relatively the same size, and these took 110 grams, these took 89 gra uh, 98 grams. So, I don't know what's the difference. Has it something to do with the yarn or the age, because they are same yarn? Uh, I do agree, the most, like the most public, that Novitas uh, quality of yarn has gone down and with the quality it also has impacted on the uh, yarn weights. Uh, Nala for example is listed as a DK way and uh, I'd say it's a sport weight, even rather on the light side of the sport weight. So uh, I don't know when the white yarn that I used to dye this was born, uh, bore, both. <laughs> So, um, could it have some uh, affect, affection to it? I have also, as you might have noticed, said in buttons, because now I know it's going to be a boy. For this uh, Burpheron Cardi, I went to uh, ducks. There are blue ducks and green ducks. And because the dogs are so small and the uh, buttonholes for these pants were huge, I went and blew mushrooms here. I also put the uh, ducklings to these uh, booties, one green, one blue. For this uh, blue set, orange, yellow, <coughs> Sorry about that, as I said, I have sinus infection. Orange and yellow here. And then... Green, blue, purple and pink. And also, this has buttons. <laughs> so the whole set is ready to go! I even found a postal bag big enough to put this all in. So, uh, all in all, I think this is quite a nice set, or collection actually, even. <sighs> yeah, I love knitting rabbits. <laughs> so, yeah. The last finished project, project that I have finished and you haven't seen ever before is this shopping pack. And um, so I bought this white yarn. Um, I think it was spring 14. Novita had this very lovely um, sweater in their uh, spring edition for small girls and I thought it was, I think this is Novita Geisler I'm not actually even sure what this yarn is called it's sort of like it has this tubular uh, structure 
I think it's cotton and acrylic mix. So, um, I bought this in order to make a jacket for my goddaughter. When I got home and I read the uh, pattern again, I noticed first that I had purchased the wrong yarn. And the second thing was that the first size was, I think, four years old or two years old. So anyway, a size overly big to her at that point. So instead, I needed a, a, a bag. Yes, I know it looks crocheted. It's knitted. It's a mesh, so it's yarn over two together, yarn over two together. And then the next round is knitted. And then it's again yarn over two together, yarn over two together. And it has been sitting on my lips box ever since. I think I took me week, two weeks to knit. I even crocheted these African flowers because I had some leftover yarn. And um uh, I think about a year, two years ago, that might be right, I'm not sure, uh, I purchased this uh, bag that I have here in from uh, Flying Tiger of Copenhagen. They have a chain in Finland as well. And uh, then I purchased this uh, machine die by Dylan from uh, Hango. It's, uh, I can't remember the name of the shop, but they are importing Indian, Nepalese clothing and that sort of stuff. <laughs> I would love to try to avoid calling them hippies, but I don't know actually what else to call it. What sort of like alternative fashion store and uh, I dyed the back and I dyed the uh, flowers and I have this one lovely t-shirt that um, used to be white and it was sort of like see-through which of course I didn't like because I couldn't wear it so I dyed them all at the uh, this earth, uh, sky blue color I absolutely adore this shade and um, so this academic year when it started I signed up for three classes in community college one of them is uh, plant dyeing one of them is bobbin lace and third is can I get the drums please sewing I know if you have been watching my podcast from the beginning I swore on the first episode I'll never try sewing again. Yeah. I decided that if I have a sewing machine and I have just paid a good money to get it serviced, so uh, I better learn to use it as well. So I signed up this class and uh, so far it has been two times and I have already finished two projects. This bag being one of them. So it is sewn fast with the machine. So I like it. It's a nice purse or shopping bag. The first thing I finished on the sewing class was my tea towel. See? Ends are all sewn in. Uh, there are, well, there is seven or eight of us at the black class, and I don't need to brag, but I'm the only one who has actually finished something for this year. <laughs> oh, of course, given that there is has been only two lessons so far, and everyone else are more sort of like enthusiastic seamstresses than I am so they are making things like jackets and 
dresses and dog wear and baby wear and sort of like bigger things that need a little planning and uh, so then compared to that I've been sewing two direct seams but hey it's finished it is finished after nearly 10 years or over 10 years I'm not exactly sure it's 2006 2007 when I started this, but it's finished. Finally, it's finished. Yeah. Um, then I did some painting, or fabric painting actually. Uh, when I was in Worldcon, they had this marketplace, and uh, there was this store stall by uh, Antipo. She's uh, uh, a designer, some kind of uh, print designer, I would actually call her probably. And she had this amazing shopping bag with red dragon protecting a pile of candies. And I absolutely had to get one of those bags. And since I didn't actually have that kind of colors, to color the dragon, uh, I went to Flying Tiger of Copenhagen again. I'm sort of a fan of them to purchase some uh, fabric colors, and I found these. So uh, it's glitter paint for fabric, and uh, I sort of estimated quite wrongly how much I'm going to need. First time I purchased uh, one set of these glitter colors and then one set of these neon colors I used to uh, dye the candies. And I ran out of the green after finishing the tail. I ran out of the purple after finishing a one of these uh, uh, wings. I think I got a hang of start the second one, but not actually finished that either. So then I went back to the Tiger and purchased two packs more of the glitter colors because I mean that got to be enough. It was. And at that point, I started the uh, desperate search for the third pack. And uh, I had to visit, I think it was the fourth Flying Tiger of Copenhagen in the capital area of Finland, where they had a bag of those glitter colors left. But nevertheless, I got it. Now it's finished. Now I can use it. And I mean, what's better than glittery dragons? There isn't better than glittery dragons. <laughs> uh, since I had the glitter colors, I had some leftovers or a lot of leftovers I even gave a plastic bag full of those colors to my friend who has a first grader so I was going through my other canvas bags and I found my ginger tree studios bag and uh, that happened <laughs> so uh, the skin of yarn is blue like it is in uh, her actual um, icon, the needles are silver and the cat is partially golden partially because I would have then needed another uh, pen of color to dye the cat completely in golden but I think it gives a nice twist and if I remember right uh, Ginger, the uh, cat who's at where the shop has been named is also partially white All right, the pile won't stick there, like that. Um, yeah, I have three weeps that I'm working at the moment. One of them, of course, is the Kalevala cow. Seven, 
pieces out, seven squares done. Uh, if you why, if you want to what, guess why it's rather late when I'm uh, recording today, it's because I wanted to play catch up first with the cavalcade. So first piece was Ilmatar. This I showed you last time as already already. The second piece is Sotkan Pesa, Nest of the Bluebell, and it's designed by Taina Tauchi. The third piece is uh, Maailman Sündu, uh, Birth of the World, and it is designed by somebody whose name I cannot remember, surprisingly. The third piece is by uh, Soile Olmari and it has the same blue pills nest than I had in the previous one, so that's why I have similar colors. The fourth piece is called The Hidden Sun by Susku Eusti. This is the first time I've used the second yellow that I was speaking the last time. And the fifth piece is uh, The Big Oak by Maya Lena Siuvatti. This is so far my favorite of the pieces. And this was also a lovely crochet project. I had a smidgen of the thought that I might crochet at some point a full blanket with this motif, but that kind of, I came to my senses. I'm not going to do that. The sixth piece is uh, the. I know what's that in. Um... What's that in English? Uh, it's called Pohjan Akka, so it's uh, Major of the North. Uh, Akka is sort of like, uh, it's a dimi diminishing word for a woman, usually used for an older woman. So, uh, matron is probably the wrong word to use, but I don't actually remember what was the official translation. Uh, it's been designed by Marit Leinoren. It looks a lot more complicated than it is. I actually think the, this was very nice crochet. Uh, this was one of those pieces I crocheted this morning. And uh, I know that some people have been seeing certain things on it, but yeah, no, it's just a nice crochet piece. And then the last one uh, is Lemminkainen. And uh, it's designed by Mirva Nikkonen. And Lemminkainen, uh, he was one of those... Uh, uh, I think he, it would be easy to call him the curling child of his age. <laughs> um, one of the best known uh, pieces of the Kalevala artwork is uh, after Lemminkainen has been killed and his body has been washed on the shores of the uh, river of the death so his mother goes there and gets all the pieces together and pray to restore life in her son I don't actually remember what happens then <laughs> It's been a year since I have last time sort of like got to know the uh, Kalevala mythology. Uh, this was also nice to crochet. I think this is a little bit bigger piece than all my other pieces. Or this is the same size as Sotkan Pesa, so it's, it's a bigger than the other, other pieces. I like the color combination. Mm. 
darker on the inside and then getting lighter on the outside. Um, but it has been it has been interesting crocheting project. I never thought I would actually keep up with it, even though I started with that thought that I'm going to keep up with it, but I never managed to do that. My other works in process are well, you might call them works in process. <laughs> this is my Miss Mary dress. I should cast on 80 something stitches. So far, I've done 30 ish. Um, I decided to go with the uh, I called cast on to get more structure to the. Um, Shoulders, shoulders, and uh, of course it's taken ages. What can you do? I'm using the the hair. Let me. Uh, there was a minor yarn bar, but yeah, that won't mind. Another work in progress that I can say that I have started is another pair of socks to my goddaughter. Four rows, first sock. This is also a collated yarn that I dyed when she was here. Uh, I'm not sure actually if this yarn is one of those skeins that her mother dyed. I don't remember. Nevertheless, it's going to be socks. Oh my God. And this is living my lovely uh, little bee accessories. Mario back, Japanese knot, Japanese, Japanese knot back, and a uh, little bit Kirsty. She had a uh, Etsy shop update today, and I was there was some drooling, some serious drooling. I think she had five or six colorways of yarn that I could have purchased immediately and then there were a few very lovely sock balanks and uh, other very lovely things but I'm sort of like trying to save up some money to go to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival next spring so so far I've kept kept that at bay. I did however purchase some yarn So um, I went to uh, two weeks ago to a planned dye course by the community college. It was a weekend course. Uh, I was there also last year and I liked it a lot. So the, this year I went back and I even got a friend to go with me. I hate to say that I'm an enabler, but I am. I'm proud of it. So uh, last year I only had my own yarn with me and I didn't buy any of the yarn that they were selling. This year I only had this one with me. This is my hand spun of mysterious white fiber both, both for my world of wool. And uh, now this is dyed with matter root and uh, crepe leaves. And this came out alright. I like this much better than I did before dyeing. Then I purchased uh, three skeins, total of 140 grams of those hand dyed uh, yarns. This is uh, Cochineal, it's actually quite vivid pink, heather color, yeah heather might be nice um, right for it. There's 40 gram of this. Then there is this uh, orange color that's matter root. This was the uh, fourth path. And then there is this lovely green one that's from uh, I have no idea that what that plant is called in English. It's sort of a small flower that looks like a daisy. 
but it doesn't actually have the white petals so it's just the yellow yellow nub in there I did took some uh, video footage when I was there and if the video is even somewhat tolerable so uh, I'll edit it and put it here so that you can see the process of what we were using uh, to dye the yarns and the yarn that I purchased from there this is a uh, two ply fin sheep wool and uh, it's from their own sheep they grow sheep and uh, I think this was actually ridiculously cheap yarn because it's 8 euros per 100 grams of locally produced wool so uh, I'm very happy with this purchase so uh, here I have the hand spun yarn I don't think I have shown this to you at any point previously it is extremely uneven and just to make it a little more appealing I'm going to dye it today and uh, first I have set in the sort of uh, extra bits and pieces here to get the uh, yarn to hold and then I have the regular ones and since there is a lot of people here I also have this one that shows that it's my yarn and the first thing I'm going to do with this is that I'm going to uh, wash it and get it all wet and all right now I have my yarn ready uh, it's been modeled it and uh, it was in modern bath with uh, oven for about an hour in um, 80 to 90 degrees Celsius and since I plan to get a uh, multicolor yarn so um, I'm going to put the uh, color path as it is and uh, then tomorrow I'll uh, reset the skein and uh, dye it with another dark color to get a multicolored set but it's uh, it's more than an hour so uh, it's good to go and continue all right now the yarn is in the pot there is some creep leaves there are some leaves it's difficult to see and there is a lot of yarn and some water and it's going to stay there for about 10 16 hours or something like that and here's everything else <laughs> there's different different toys in different pots and uh, we'll see tomorrow how they look out all right here's my yarn now it has been on the dye bath for uh, overnight I think it was around 2 p.m. yesterday when I left it there and now it is uh, about 10 a.m. and uh, I washed it once and uh, as you can see the color has taken on those places that were out and it's rather white still on the inside and uh, now uh, it's going to go to the second color path with matter root and um, yeah I'll show you later how it came out all right so here I have the matter root and this is the third color path of the same patch uh, there is some gray yarn and some white yarn and my uh, double dye which I have dyed already once and uh, then we have here cochineal color path and as you may see it's not that is supposed to do, uh, warm up only 70 degrees same as the matter root and that's because the uh, 
As a matter of fact, it tolerates even more heat, but um, it gets more orange, and I prefer the um, red one, as does our teacher. And there we have one additional color path as well. That has um, it has a henna color on it with some baking soda. Uh, it's supposed to get ready quite, quite quickly, um, so I'm hoping to see my new yarn in um, about half an hour or so. So here we have the results. It's a lot of yarn in a lot of different shades and colors. Those are actually yellow. All of them are yellow, not white or grey. That's the first row. The second row, that includes the mother root and the cochineal. And then there is more cochineal and uh, probably a little more mother root. We also used some uh, red swamps. I gave a gorgeous color. And then we have the third row. Again, they are yellow, a light green, even maybe. <laughs> and that's my yarn over here. It has several colors on it. And the last row is over there. And that's silk. Wool and silk. And it's the first base of Koshinel. So that's the results. And uh, yeah. Oh, only that much yarn. And I don't know why the colors are coming so weird because the front row is with greens and yellows. It doesn't have a single grey yarn on it. And last, last but not least, here's the uh, chart of all the colors we dyed. And this is what I'm getting. Coach scholars. So, if you have any questions about the plant dyeing, um, I don't promise to actually answer to all of those, but I might give it a try. I have a few books about plant dyeing, just over here. I'm especially fond of this book. Nature's dice. It's huge. It's big. It's heavy. It has a lot of information on it. And what's best, it's made by Finnish authors to finish nature. So uh, yeah, it's a lovely book. Uh, it's not, however, the book that I was planning to uh, introduce to you today. Instead, I was thinking about uh, talking about this uh, this book. Uh, so the Finnish title is Hyvän mielen vaatekaappi, and the English title uh, might be translated to something like Feel Good About Your Wardrobe. It's a book about, uh, by Rinna Saramäki, and uh, he has been underrating underrating a long time i think i started it's last february or january and i just finished it this morning um, um the book is mostly about the sustainability of the clothing i do not consider myself being an ecological person um 
and I have to agree that or admit that I'm not particularly interested where the cotton on my clothes comes from. Uh, after reading this book, I have to say that I have to start caring more. Uh, of course, that's easy, that way that I don't buy a lot of clothes. Uh, I hate clothes shopping. Partially because I have such an old body form that it's very difficult to find suitable clothes. So, um, partially the problem is already solved. But then there is the thing that I have the small thing for those crazy t-shirts you see me wearing a few times. And uh, I was going through my wardrobe last weekend. Uh, it wasn't actually inspired by the book, it was mostly inspired by the fact that I couldn't see the floor in my clothing room. So uh, I had to arrange it. And uh, I was looking through all those t-shirts when I was setting them back into the places. And most of them actually are already in a, in a very bad shape. I think uh, I've worn most of them once or twice, so that means they've been washed three times max and their seams look like this or like this so I don't know if they're actually meant to do your wearing and after reading this book I'm not surprised because if a person is paid by a, a piece that they are sewing so you don't really actually care if the fabric is cut right to make a durable seam. And uh, it had a lot of talk about that it would be better to buy clothes that you can prepare yourself and uh, clothes that you can wear no matter what the uh, ongoing fashion statement is. And clothes that at the end can be recycled and of course the same thing about shoes as well so uh, if you're a Finnish person I absolutely recommend you to read this book and uh, there is a lot of uh, international reading of the same topic and there are books like uh, Uh, where are they? I was checking that there were some English books as well. Mm. There are, for example, a book by uh, Kate Fletcher, Sustainable Fashion and Textiles from 2008 and uh, life, cy life, life Cycle Assessment, New Zealand Marino Industry, Marino Wool Total Energy Use and Carbon Dioxide Emissions and then uh, The Ecological Footprint and Water Analysis of Cotton uh, So there are a lot of material out there if you're interested to do the reading. Uh, as I said, I have never considered myself as an ecological person. So, um, I'm probably still going to go to work on Monday by car. I would not need to, I could walk, I'll take a ride a bike. And I don't believe in any changes done overnight, but I think I'm going to let leave the next t-shirt to the store and wear first those that I have and uh, since I have used t-shirts already that I know I'm not going to be wearing anymore to uh, find uh, how I can recycle them 
and use them for something else uh, because yeah so good book to read on the topic that I was thinking about issuing uh, Freya from Freya Spins was talking about her stash and um, how people knitters think that big stash is expected. I do agree that I had a, a quite a lot of yarns at home. I have a lot of crafting supplies. Well, you can see the wall behind me that has books. Crafting supplies. Uh, button speeds, you name it basically. And I have my yarns in my bedroom, and there's a lot of it. And being a person who does not sew, I also have quite a lot of fabrics. And given that I have just started spinning, I also have quite a lot of uh, fibers. And that suits me. I don't mind using money on a hobby that I love. Then again, I have the space to store it. And uh, I even actually use the, 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 um, the yarns as a voice insulator because I have a rather loudy neighbor, the wrong kind of loudy neighbor. So I used to have the yarns right here where the materials are now, but uh, I then moved them to my bedroom to get more voice insulation. Um, I was going through my yarns uh, in the spring because I have these plastic boxes where I uh, keep my yarns. And uh, once in a while, it's good to go through them because uh, uh, when you are using something and then you're buying something new and then you're putting the new one in the box where there is room and over a while, so your system is not valid anymore. So I think every couple of years I go through my, all my yarns and see that they are boxed in a company of similar yarns that, for example, if I'm looking for, a, well, a good example, like all of our local project. So all I had to do was go through the three boxes where it says apply yarn. Uh, Overall, I think I'm rather happy with my star, uh, my yarn supply, and it has uh, wool or other fibers to uh, knit most of the projects out of whim. I have purchased few sweater quantities this year. At the beginning of the year, I purchased Noit and um, Noit no, 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 uh, Drops Andes for Silvicardi. Uh, silvic That's yet to start. That was two kilos of Drops Andes in turquoise. And uh, in July, I purchased an uh, additional kilo of Drops Andes in aqua color to make it all sweater. But I have three or four other yarns for a sweater quantity for myself and I should start knitting. Uh, probably the only one, only thing that I saw missing from my uh, yarn supply is a suitable yarn to combine all these pieces because it calls for 400 grams of six ball yarn and I do have 
uh, 400 grams of 6 ply yarn. I just don't have it in same unicolor. So that I need to go and buy. Um, but then again, the yarn supply, the material supply, fiber supply, whatever it is, I think it's very personal. I know that people like to keep their supply in minimal because they might not have the storage space, they may not have the money, uh, they might be just very disciplined people who can actually control them on a yarn store. I can't, usually at least. So, um, I don't know if the yarn shop supply is a matter that should be discussed any more than on a personal level. There is no right or wrong answers. Uh, I know on the uh, social media it comes up discussions here and there that oh my god I purchased yarn now I have to hide it from my significant other. Uh, I do not understand that. Hobbies cost money. No matter how cheap the hobby is, it costs money. If your hobby is running, you need to buy a new running shoes two or three times a year. If you want good running shoes, they cost 200 euros easily. And running is considered to be cheap hobby. All hobbies cost money. And uh, as long as you're paying your rent or your mortgage, and there's food on the table on the day before your next paycheck comes in. What's the point of hiding the love, the thing you love? Uh, the um, I read a blog. Uh, I think it was sometime in the spring or the summer. Uh, it was made by a quilter, uh, or written by a quilter. And uh, she was taking a point on the word stash and how by the things, the words we use, we actually create images and uh, drug, drug dealers have stash. I consider my yarn supply as it is yarn supply. So it is the storage base where I can go and choose the yarns that I use. Uh, of course, because uh, Ravelry uses the word stash, and uh, well, you might actually have guessed I'm not a native English speaker. So I picked up a lot of the knitting English from uh, Ravelry. And uh, I've become accustomed to use the word stash and now I've been working very hard to not use it. Uh, in Finnish I would never ever speak of katka, which would be the equivalent of stash as the bad meaning of the word. I have your storage in Finnish as well. And uh, it is uh, craft and knitting are considered to be a cheap hobby because yarn is supposed to be cheap. Well, if you want good quality yarn, it's not cheap. And when we are using words like stash, and when we are considering that we have a need to hide those purchases, so we are also creating at the same time the atmosphere of shame around our beloved hobby and uh, it's also diminishing the value of it that we put on our work. Uh, this of course brings us another discussion completely about the uh, price of uh, handcrafting or crafts. Uh, I was actually recently asked by a colleague if I had knit a pair of socks to him and I did agree as long as we would get in the line of price. 
uh, he said that he like uh, dark blue socks and I said the darker the yarn, the higher the polarize is. I haven't seen him since to discuss if he really is interested and what the pricing would be. Because if we are thinking about, uh, it takes me about 16 hours to need, uh, need socks for a man from my 8 ply yarn. Just over 20 to 6 ply yarn and then about 30 hours for a 4 ply yarn. And uh, I do not think he actually realizes the amount of work it needs to be put in them. So, uh, yeah, if he agrees to actually swap the hours to something else, yeah, I might actually do that. <laughs> Most likely, I'll never hear my mask again. That usually happens because handed socks are supposed to be cheap. You should be able to buy them by five euros from a flea market. With our 5 euros, you don't actually even get good yarn. And uh, it's partially because nearly everyone in Finland still have the grandmother, or great grandmother, or something similar who knits and keeps the whole family in socks by crafting and giving a pair of socks every Christmas. And uh, thus, Finns think that wool socks are cheap and easy gift. As I said, it takes about 16 hours for me to need a pair of socks from a player for a I do not consider 16 hours of crafting being cheap by any means. Uh, for example, uh, I don't mind knitting constantly things for my guy better because her mother is a crafter and she understands the value of the time that has been put in the work. And uh, I don't mind knitting and cra crafting to people who un actually understand and value the value of my time that I have put in the piece. Yeah, that's my two cents to discussion. <laughs> I actually just noticed I'm wearing an Australian yarn again. Uh, I can't actually even remember what the uh, yarn brand is called. This is Australian non sing Merino, uh, three ply hand dyed yarn. I purchased this uh, from Paddington Markets in Sydney. My friend from the hostel is in the uh, Jessica. Hi Jessica, if you're watching, Greetings to Germany. Uh, so uh, she had read about the Paddington markets and she wanted to go. And uh, well, I was rather easy to persuade to go with her. And there were a lot of interesting things there. Uh, it was mostly sort of like farmers market. And there were some crafts. I think it was a weekly event, the Baddington Markets. And uh, there was, well, this was the only yarn seller that was there. Uh, she was selling her own yarn, or the, the hand dyed yarn she had been dyeing. Uh, I think I have the information somewhere up in uh, Ravelry, so I'll put it in notes. And uh, these are my colors, exactly my colors. I, I fell in love with this color um, because it was, I think it was $22 for 100 crowns. So it's, it was a lot at a time for my budget. So I put it down from my hands once and then we were leaving and then I said, Jessica, all right, you know, I'm going to go and buy the yarn. And um, well, I did. <laughs> Uh, the uh, scarf that I needed from it, uh, it's a fake hitchhiker. Those of you who do not know, the hitchhiker is uh, 
simple corner stitch shawl designed by Martina Pem and uh, well I didn't buy the pattern I just look at the pictures and make something similar so uh, I usually just call the Becky Trigger I still haven't actually bought the Becky Trigger <laughs> I have two or three of these uh, scarves that I've made with the same pattern so I've like just went it so uh, yeah this this is very nice size shawl uh, it took, I'd say, 95 grams of the yarn. I had some left over. Um, I crocheted a monster because I had some leftovers of uh, some turquoise light blue uh, band of cotton. And uh, I made the hair for it from this yarn. No, it wasn't that. I made the eyes from this yarn to her, the uh, monster. And then I needed some of this to my uh, cousin's socks because uh, I was knitting socks for my godson and uh, his brother for Christmas. And I purchased two skeins of Shop and Walla Admiral. One in orange and one in green. And uh, my godson got a pair that was orange. And that was a combination of orange and green. And his brother got one pair of uh, light green. And the other one was supposed to be a combination of the light green and the orange. But I ran out of the light green and the orange. So uh, I think a toe decrease is what I made from this yarn because this was the only about the same size or same uh, weight of yarn that I had. But that's all I had left from it, so it's all used up. Yeah, I think this is pretty much everything I was supposed to tell you. Uh, I did mention last time that I was going to uh, Lahti to the uh, Knitting Podcast Meetup. Uh, it was a lovely meeting. I met a lot of people, uh, also people whose podcasts I had been watching. And uh, after the uh, meetup, I have found one or two new podcasts mm. to follow, including the uh, Mariana's Omitoyen Atusnello. So uh, it was uh, it was a nice afternoon. Uh, we were sitting outdoors, and uh, the weather was actually very nice. Uh, it was warm. It was sunny. Uh, the yard where we were sitting, so it was quite well covered, so that the wind wasn't actually blowing that badly. And uh, I mean you. Could to sit there in a sweat, uh, in a chico, uh, in a light shirt. Everyone has like everyone had like wooden sweaters, woolen shorts, scarves, mittens, hats, everything. And then oh, it's so warm here. <laughs> so it was like nice afternoon. Uh, I didn't purchase any yarn because I had just previously purchased some sukkapu for Saike. So it was uh, by the uh, buffalo who is dyeing the sukka buffalo yarn. And uh, the other thing is that they are selling the saiki yarn uh, by one of our local yarn, sh yarn, sh yarn shops here. So if I need an additional skein, I would go and buy it from there just to support the uh, local yarn shop and the fact that they are actually carrying these days lots of nice yarns. Uh, next weekend I'm going to a knitting retreat, the Sipsyn Kuito Pinoist It's actually my first real knitting retreat, so I'm very much looking forward to it. Of course, if the little bugger known as my sinus affection doesn't get any better, I don't know if I can go, but I'm hopeful. 
and uh, as I said in the beginning, I'm planning to go to the Edinburgh Young Festival next year. I have looked up a hostel. Well, of course, because it's Edinburgh, I've been in Edinburgh two times already. I know which hostel I'm going to stay. I've started looking for the flights. Uh, I'm waiting still the flights to come down we beat on the prices before I make my bookings and the festival tickets should come out in end of October. Uh, I'm hoping to participate to maybe one uh, class and then the uh, evening gala and then otherwise just sort of like hang, hang around. Of course hang around in Edinburgh as well. This Edinburgh is a lovely city. Um, at the moment, if the plan goes through, I'm going to be in Edinburgh for a week from Tuesday to Tuesday. So there might be actually even chance that I might go to Aberdeen. 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 Yeah, it's called Aberdeen. <laughs> There's gorgeous place names, that's so difficult to say. And Aberdeen is one of the easy ones. Uh, so, we'll see. Of course it depends on the weather as well, and if I get a better uh, deal on the flights, because at the moment the best one is from Tuesday to Tuesday, but if I could get something from Wednesday to Monday that might be better, because then I could save up to uh, vacation days, and so forth. Uh, I'm also participating into uh, Need Stars 2.0 uh, Needles Flying this year. Uh, I found out the Need Stars from uh, Tink Hanitz, surprisingly. Uh, there's also Amy Herzog, uh, who has done a lot of books about knitting to your size, especially in sweaters. Uh, I have heard of her books, surprisingly. Uh, so she's one of the teachers. Uh, also, the uh, Hedgehog Fiber should be teaching there. Uh, Nancy Marchant, Queen of uh, Brioche, is teaching. Uh, I think Hanitz is teaching. Uh, there are some others as well. <laughs> I think it's uh, all in all 10 people who are teaching there. And uh, I think it's seven or eight lectures uh, or classes that are part of the NIT, NIT stars this year. So it starts in October and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. I hope my coughing wasn't too bad. I hope my voice isn't too low or sort of like bad. I I do agree that my voice sounds in my own ears so really sketchy. But we'll see. Uh, I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be having time to podcast podcast in three weeks time, but hopefully sometime soon. Yeah, see ya.